Frankly, it has taken forever, but we are finally here. Ever since the broadcast of the Bleach anime, we've been waiting and counting the days until the Blu-ray release. Normally, they would be released almost immediately after the TV broadcast, but oddly enough, this wasn't the case for Bleach. All we had gotten was an announcement for the release of the Blu-rays, and it was scheduled months after the initial airing of the episodes. And this had many of us wondering just what the problem was. Why was there such a delay? Today, we're finally going to have the answer to this question, and to put it simply, Kubo and Taguchi were cooking, and man did they make us a feast. So with the Blu-rays now released, we're finally ready to assess each and every single new addition and change that has been made to the home video release of the first core of Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War arc. It had appeared that the anime staff had finished their work on the Blu-rays once we had the release of a brand new anime music video just a few weeks ago. Now if you recall, I did make a video on this and I theorized that the brand new shots that we had seen in that music video were most likely corrected shots that had been taken straight from the Blu-rays. And after seeing all the multiple changes that they have made and those shots themselves, my suspicions have been confirmed. But even I hadn't suspected that there would be this many corrections and additions, which really confirms just how much love and care the staff are putting into the production. Now before I speak about anything else, I want to discuss some comments that Kubo had made about this Blu-ray release on his official fan club club outside. Now Kubo says that when he had found out that there were a lot of corrections made to the Blu-ray release of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, anime, he had gone to check with the director Taguchi about it, but the director wasn't really aware of the anime staff having made these adjustments. So it seems like the anime team had voluntarily gone back and fixed specific aspects of the episodes that they were not happy with from the first core. Now this is because they didn't have the time to do the corrections so that they would be ready in time for the TV broadcast. In his comment, Kubo states that he is really happy with the corrections and more so than anything, this just highlights how passionate the anime staff are towards making this a proper adaptation of the final arc of Bleach. To think that they had gone back and they had made corrections out of their own eagerness and excitement really puts a smile to my face, and it proves that they really do love what they are doing. We know that the pre-orders for the Blu-ray and DVD were really high, with the sales for the first day of the DVD sales ranking in the number 5 spot of the animation section. Also, for international fans importing the Blu-ray release, CD Japan has ranked it in the number 1 spot for their daily rankings. The data for the Blu-ray rankings is not available just yet yet, but with the success of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime broadcast at the end of last year, we can expect the first week sales data to reflect this success that the anime has had, back when it was first airing on TV and simulcasted across the world on Disney+. The Thousand Year Blood War arc anime had beaten the likes of Chainsaw Man and other anime airing at the time. Now the Blu-ray release is packaged with two separate discs. The first covers the revised or remastered versions of episodes 1-6, to and disc 2 which includes revised versions for episodes 7 to 13. Before I dive into every major change made within the Thousand Year Blood War arc Blu-ray, let's speak about some of the comments that were made by Kubo and the anime staff which have been included in this physical media release. Now these comments mostly include clarification from Kubo and the anime staff on some specific scenes, and overall this clarification helps us to better understand what is going on in the anime. So some comments were made in regards to the conversation between Aizen and Yuho Bak, and we finally have confirmation from the staff comments that the two characters were in fact conversing using Reiatsu in a metaphysical sense. Now this is despite the anime having drawn Aizen with his seals removed from his face making us think that he was verbally speaking with Yuhobak. Now these comments from the staff confirm that they were speaking via Reiatsu, but it was depicted like a normal conversation for the audience to better understand this particular scene. So don't be mistaken, Aizen is still imprisoned within Muken and he is sealed from head to toe entirely. Additionally, the anime staff comments have also confirmed that Aizen did indeed use Kyokasu Getsu on Yuhobak in order to alter his perception of time. Now this was something that was assumed by fans for years but it's now finally been confirmed. And after this confirmation, it's opened the door for a whole new number of ways that Kyokasu Getsu can be used. In additional comments, Kubo has confirmed that Sasakibe was indeed responsible for defeating Yuhobak 1000 years ago during the original battle against Yuhobak and his army. This was when he had stabbed Yuhobak from behind and it was in fact a deciding blow which had led to the defeat of Yuhobak and thus bringing an end to the war. So it makes sense as to why Sasakibe was the first Shinigami that was killed by the Quincy following their return, as it seems like they had targeted him for his actions all those years ago. Another interesting piece of information is that each of the characters within Bleach appear to have a flower which represents them. We have confirmation that Kubo has also created an original flower to represent Ichigo, and we see it within the opening song for the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, as well as the special ending during the last episode of the first call, where 
but we got some new visuals. Now during this special ending, we see each of the Shinigami along with their respective flowers and lastly we see Ichigo with his original flower. Now this flower is revealed to be called the Flame Lily or Gloriosa which is a flower that represents courage. Other comments included within the Thousand Year Blood War arc Call 1 box sets have also clarified the reasoning behind the different colouring of Ichigo's Reatsu. So Ichigo's Reatsu colouring is different within the original 2004 anime as well as in the full colour manga versions of Bleach. But we finally have clarification now that Ichigo's normal Reatsu colouring is in fact yellow. But when he is in a heightened emotional state, his Reatsu changes colour to red. And we see this within the anime when he confronts Yuhobak and his Reatsu amplifies and turns into this incredible red colour. Additionally, the first cut of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime has revealed specific colouring of Reatsu, like Hitsugaya's which is depicted as a deep blue, and the Aranka-like Apache where her Reatsu is given a green colour. Now details like this add a bit more personalization to each of the characters, with their Reatsu colouring complementing their personalities and powers. And later on in the video, I'll talk a bit more about how the Blu-rays have included different Reatsu colouring in some of the changes that they've made to the episodes. The anime staff have also included a mention of a change that was done with the Sternritter Meninas, where her character was originally shown to be winking in a flirtatious manner during the storyboarding stage of the anime. However, Kubo had decided to change this instead as he had stated that he wants Meninas to remain as an emotionless character. Now, Bernice's abilities are also explained within the physical media release as he has the ability to object to things and his opponent is affected if they do not overcome the rejection that he poses to them. He can object to anything and he thus forces his opponents to respond to him. Bernice has rejected Kimpachi's instinct or desire to kill but because his hearing was affected by the Sternritter Jerome who had in fact roared so loudly that he had burst Kimpachi's eardrums so Kimpachi didn't end up hearing Bernice. So incidentally he was unaffected by his power. This had ultimately led to the swift but hilarious defeat of Bernice. Despite the insane potential that Bernice's ability the question has, it was taken out of the equation very prematurely thanks to a rather convenient roar from Jerome. And it's almost funny to think of just how ridiculous this power was and how much the Shinigami would have suffered for it if Kimpachi had fought those three Sternritters in a different order. So yeah, these nice little tidbits of information are included within the DVD and Blu-ray release of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime's first core. These additional comments do a nice job of providing some context and clarification to some certain scenes, as well as revealing some interesting facts like the new information that we have learnt about Ichigo's Reatsu colouring. So moving on from this, let's now look at each of the revised episodes from the Blu-ray and compare them to the respective TV broadcast versions. I'm really excited to talk about some of the changes that have been made because basically Taguchi and his team have done a fantastic job of going back and improving the weaker areas of several episodes. They have done far more than even I had expected in order to improve the overall presentation of the first cut of the anime. The Blu-ray still shots that we are using for comparison to the TV broadcast have kindly been provided to us by this Twitter user who has painstakingly posted examples from each of the episodes highlighting any changes that they spot between the two different sources. So I'd like to preface that the first few episodes don't really feature a lot of significant changes and the real standout episodes for the most alterations have to be episodes 7 and 10 in my opinion. But when it comes to episode 1, we do have some examples here that highlight some slight differences between the broadcast version and the final Blu-ray version of the episode. Now, there is also every possibility that these differences may not even be corrections and just differences between the frames that were taken for comparison between these two versions, because these alterations appear to be very, very minor. In the case of episode 2, we don't really have a lot of changes aside from an alteration that was made to the mid-card of the episode, where the TV broadcast version has a run car written at the top, but the Blu-ray version corrects this to Aran cars. Episode 3 features several changes made to the visual effects during Ichigo's battle against Kilge. The TV broadcast version has a really bright blue colouring for the Quincy's Reatsu, but it is toned down notably within the Blu-ray release. We can see this in several instances thanks to these comparison shots where we see Ichigo clashing against the Sternritter, and you notice that the colouring of the effects are far more muted within the Blu-ray version. And lastly, we have a shot of Ichigo that has been corrected for the Blu-ray where we see that his facial expression has been fixed by changing his eyes and mouth and another adjustment has been made to the back of his hair. Now I was hoping for the 20 second loop of Ichigo fighting Kilge to have been fixed by including some different animation but this wasn't done unfortunately and this was probably the only real disappointment of this episode but with the number of fixes that they have in fact made I can understand why there wasn't enough time to reanimate this fight scene. Episode 4 is the first notable 
example where we get to see quite a bit of changes between the TV broadcast and the Blu-ray versions. There is everything from alterations that have been made to the visual effects, to the composition of scenes, to added motion blur in specific areas, and even changes made to the mid-card of the episode. Earlier in the video, I'd spoken about how the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime is personalizing the reatsu of each character. Well, you can see in this episode that they have changed Robert's holy form color to now be green. And with Bambietta's holy form looking red in the Core 2 trailer, it seems as though everyone is getting a different color of Reatsu. And again, I really like these changes that they are doing. Episode 4 features alterations made to the scenery in several scenes, like following Hitsugaya's Bankai transformation. We can see that the Blu-ray version provides us with a more detailed, darker background, highlighting the environmental change following Hitsugaya's Bankai release. During Byakuya's confrontation with Asnot, the Blu-rays add more detail to the tiles that Byakuya is standing on. The broadcast version, the tiles look very dull and grey in comparison, whereas the Blu-ray adds this eerie blue colour to the scene, making the environment feel cold, and incidentally giving Byakuya this feeling of isolation. Overall, the change just adds a lot more atmosphere to this particular scene. The improvements made to the background are present throughout Renji and Byakuya's encounter with Asnod, and we even see a scene where the composition has been altered between the Blu-ray and broadcast versions. The visual effects also in several scenes have been improved upon in this episode, notably during a shot of the Sternritter mask where we see the pink glow of Senbon Zakura more prominent over the Sternritter's head in the Blu-ray release. Now speaking of improvements, Komomura's Bankai activation is given a bit more love within the Blu-ray version, as the TV version had this distracting white mist over the scene, but the revised version really lets you appreciate the visuals more. Now both mid-cards of episode 4 have changes made to them, with the first changing the on-screen text from Gotei 13 to 13 Court Guard squads, and the second mid-card which focuses on Bambietta scales down the text that is next to her for the Blu-ray version. There are some other small changes that have been made during this episode, which include the phone that Ichigo is holding not having an emblem on it during the broadcast version, but an emblem being added in the Blu-ray version. And lastly, we have some motion blur being added to this shot of Mairi, which helps to make the scene look a lot more better when it's in motion. Episode 5 features a change that was made to the mid-card, where once again the text has been altered for the Blu-ray release. The TV version has an incorrect spelling for Genji Juku, while the Blu-ray version has the correct spelling Genji Juku. Now this text is in reference to Yamamoto being the founder of the Genryu style, and he is a grandmaster of Genji Juku, which is revealed during his flashback with Sasakibe. Genji Juku is a private school that was run by Yamamoto, where he had taught and trained his students. The Genji Juku can be thought of as a predecessor to the Shinigami Academy, and this was later founded in order to help train and recruit Shinigami into the Gotei 13, which was also founded by Yamamoto. Episode 6 features some controversial changes, with the Blu-ray version cutting back on some of the colouring that we see within the TV version, while also making changes to the eyes of the CG skeletons, and removing Yuhabak's moustache from the flashback scenes, and making the blood appear to be more vivid than the broadcast version. The first shot that we are examining showcases the Blu-ray improving upon the visuals of the molten floor that is beneath Yamamoto's feet. The colouring of his legs is made to be brighter, with the lava appearing also brighter and more yellow in colour. And this is an overall improvement upon the broadcast version in my opinion. Now there is another scene where we see Yamamoto's feet which are made brighter in tone in order to reflect the light that is emitted from Yamamoto's burning reatsu. Additionally, more detail is added to the molten ground for the Blu-ray release. Other visuals are improved upon in the home video release, like Yuhabak's reatsu being made to be brighter and more blue in colour. The intensity of the blue is amplified so it washes out the darkness of the surroundings. We have also scenes where we see Yuhabak from a thousand years ago, which have been altered to show him with a stubble instead of a mighty moustache. Now, as disappointing as this is, this design is more consistent with the chronology of the Bleach timeline, and I personally believe that this correction of Yuobak's moustache was done so as to prevent first-time viewers from being spoiled on the Old Man Zangetsu reveal. Let's now talk about the CG skeletons, which have been changed slightly. Now, a brief comment by Kubo has been included within the box set, where he reveals that the CGI skeletons that were used in Episode 6 had really impressed him, and that he had really liked the end result, with him preferring the anime version over his manga version. The Blu-rays have altered the skeletons by adding red eyes to them, which some fans have criticised with this change because it blends in too much with the natural colour of the skeletons, and it looks a little jarring compared to the broadcast version. I guess it may have looked a bit better if they had made the eyes glow a bit more, so as to make it stand out more against the natural colour of the skeletons. Some fans are criticising the toning down of the compositing, like the reds and blues not being as visible visibly strong in the Blu-ray version in comparison
listen to the TV version. And we can see that in some of the comparison shots for episode 6. The toning down of the shading allows the colours on screen to blend together in a more organic manner. And this is contrasted against how garishly bright some of the scenes were in the TV broadcast version. Now this point is ultimately down to individual preferences. And in my opinion, toning down the lighting was a positive change. Episode 7 features some of the most extensive changes out of the entire batch of episodes on this release. We have various changes like art being corrected, visual effects being changed, as well as continuity errors in the anime being fixed in order to remain faithful to the manga. The stills that I am showing you highlight the differences, but to truly appreciate the changes, you will have to see the Blu-ray version of the episode in motion in order to take in some of the improvements that they have made. Episode 7 was already one of the most favourite episodes from the first core following its TV broadcast, so it's really surprising to see that the animation team have gone back and they have changed around so many aspects of this episode. Unfortunately, we are going to have to start this comparison off with a major L. Yulebuck has lost his almighty moustache and he is now supporting some weird stubble. And despite how devastating this loss was, heck, even I've heard some fans say that this was the reason that he had lost the first war. By ditching the moustache, it helps the anime to be in line with the continuity of the Bleach timeline. These corrections are made to every scene that features Yulebuck from a thousand years ago, along with some additional redraws of some of Yulebuck's frames when he is about to incinerate Yamamoto's corpse. Now, a great addition to this set of changes easily has to be the restoration of Ichigo's battle damage in the Save the Soul Society scene. Now, this is a far more consistent appearance than his completely undamaged one that we got in the TV broadcast. This episode also features multiple adjustments to the compositing, which if you haven't figured out by now, is directed to Gucci's trademark. Most notably during Ichigo's battle with Yuhobak in that iconic clash which was animated by Yoshihiro Kano, it received multiple visual enhancements. Some of these changes fix the lighting significantly in certain scenes, clearing up some blurry frames right at the start of the clash, and most importantly, changing the colours of their clashing to red, so as to indicate Ichigo's presence in the fight. It also features a good number of lighting adjustments, where certain scenes are made significantly brighter in order to make the scene look better. One other correction that stood out to me was that Yuobak's blade was given a significantly more threatening reflection in Ichigo's eyes right before he had gotten stabbed. In the TV version, it's barely noticeable, but this change greatly enhances how threatening Yuobak's attack had looked to Ichigo, and it further sells it as an attack that would have killed Ichigo if not for the fortunate emergence of his blue dween. We also get some major colour corrections after that initial clash, as Ichigo's Getsuka Tensho is recolored from yellow to black after Yuobak stabs him in the neck. Yuobak's Qual Kreeze also receives a really nice visual upgrade, where the background is darkened so as to make it look even brighter. And this also highlights how well done the rain effects are in this particular scene. But one of my favourite visual enhancements has to be the change that was made to Ichigo's blue Veen. Despite looking really good in the TV version, they went ahead and made it look even better by significantly lightening out the veins from below and changing to a darker shade as it slowly expands onto Ichigo's face. Overall, the visual upgrades in this episode are some of the best, and it's a great way to finish off disc 1. But rest assured, we've got some equally impressive changes that were made to the episodes on the second disc. Disc 2 features episode 8, and I believe it to be one of the weaker episodes during the original broadcast, and I was quite curious to see what corrections that they were going to make to this particular episode. There's quite a number of art corrections in this episode, most notably from a scene that I was really hoping would be altered, and this was Siphon's interaction with Karinji, where she gets blitzed and put into a hold by him. Now this scene looked fine in the TV version, except for a small problem. Due to the addition of excessive lines on her face and shrinking her irises to make her look more shocked, it had ended up giving her a rather goofy expression. Now this problem is resolved within the Blu-ray version, where the excessive lines are removed and her irises are made bigger so her expression looks more stronger than it did in the original broadcast version. Now the rest of the episode features rather minor corrections that I don't really think were needed but are appreciated nonetheless. Like how Mairi's pod containing the broken Tensa Zangatsu is shrunk down significantly, which shows off more of his lab, and Ichigo's expression being changed from the TV version during Squad Zero's arrival scene. While I am pleased that they have made some adjustments, I do believe that there were some more scenes that could have used some extra touch-ups. So moving on to episode 9, we get another solid set of corrections, most notably during the scenes where Ichigo and Renji had left Kurinji's palace and his men had taken off their shirts, and they revealed their injuries from being exposed to his pond. In the TV version, their wounds are drawn with very rounded and sharp edges. This makes it so it's almost difficult to tell that they're supposed to be injuries, and it could be easily mistaken for tattoos. But in the Blu-ray version of this,
this scene, the edges of injuries are blurred and shaded into their skin, and this makes the injuries look significantly more natural, and just makes the overall scene look a lot better. And this is again another episode with rather minor corrections, but considering the number of corrections that were made to the next few episodes, I can understand why they couldn't do much for the less important episodes. Now episode 10 has far more corrections than any of the other episodes that we've gotten through on disc 2. Most of these corrections are minor, but in my opinion this is probably the greatest evidence that we need in order to indicate just how much the anime staff are trying their very best to make Bleach the best that it can be, mainly due to the fact that episode 10 was one of the stronger episodes of the broadcast, at least the first half of it was anyway, so it makes sense for any adjustments that they were to do to be minimal. One of those corrections was made on Kimpachi's blade as he had prepared to attack Unahana. There were far too many highlights on the TV broadcast version, so it was changed to only have them on the blade. Now it's very clear that the anime's focus on proper lighting and highlights definitely comes from Director Taguchi's love for well-lit scenes, and it's always nice to see it followed through even to the most minute details. Another change that we can note is that there are multiple frames that were either completely redrawn or given new lighting to further emphasize the now well-known Taguchi effect. One such frame would be this one where the overall shot of Yachiru was made brighter by quite some degree. Throughout the broadcast there were multiple complaints from some fans that certain scenes had felt to be too dark, and it would seem that the staff had also agreed with this sentiment. You'd also notice that parts of certain frames had been completely redrawn in this Yachiru shot. The TV version gave her a wider face, which had given her a much goofier look, but this redraw to give her a significant slimmer face is a definite improvement in the Blu-ray version. There's also the readjustments of lighting on multiple different frames, where the TV version's already amazing compositing is enhanced even greater. Like this Yachiru shot from her flashback, where the wrong parts of her Shihaku show were lit up and the other sides were wrongly darkened from that particular shot and this was then corrected to fix that. This made the shot look very inconsistent with the source of light from that shot, so I'm very pleased that they have corrected this. Even more of the Kimpachi fight was adjusted and there's the usual touches on the lighting and frame readjustments and also some adjustments on the effects themselves, most notably during the point where Kimpachi clashes with Yachiru and disperses shards of hardened blood on a blade. There was in fact less in the TV version whereas in the Blu-rays they have increased the number of shards significantly, and not to mention they have also changed how Minazuki's blood dissipated when Yachiru was stabbed by Kimpachi. The fall of Minazuki's blood is reanimated with significantly stronger visuals, which framed the scene much more better than it had looked in the TV broadcast version. Now moving on to the second half of the episode, I am glad that they were able to fix up some parts in the second half because I remember some fans being dissatisfied with how the second half of the episode had ended up being significantly more light hearted than the first half, which had adapted Kimpachi and Yachiru's intense battle, and coupled with the fact that the second half had significantly worse art and off-model frames, adding to the dissatisfaction that fans had over the second half of this episode. But luckily Taguchi and his crew have come through again with some solid corrections. The anime staff were very intent on making sure that Owetsu's muscles had looked as defined as possible in every one of his appearances, because almost all of the corrections that were made here were either lighting corrections or in enhancements on his muscle definition, which had made him look much cooler in my opinion. Also, Owetsu's Zambakdo girls got a really nice upgrade, with their original goofy faces having been redrawn to look much better, and their bodies have been given some really nice shading that makes them look exponentially better than they did in the TV version, and it gives their assets a lot more weight now that they are properly shaded. Ichigo and Renji also have completely redrawn frames in this section, as there were quite a number of scenes in this part of the episode where Ichigo and Renji had looked off model. In the blue rays, these frames are redrawn altogether, making the already great art direction significantly better. Now finally, the scenes where Owetsu traps Renji and Ichigo within the pit to fight the Asauchi get some major corrections in this shot. Ichigo's broken tensile Zangetsu gets better lighting on its blade, and Renji's Zabimaru gets more segments than it did in the TV version. So overall, this was an episode that got a lot of fixes, which can be mainly categorized as lighting fixes, frame redraws, and quite a number of effect enhancements with each of these corrections contributing to far more consistent compositing and art direction overall. This was a very well corrected episode, and the remaining episodes on disc 2 continue to follow in the same spirit. Moving on to episode 11, and this is an episode that had received a fair number of corrections, but not as many as I'd have liked. Because in my opinion, episode 11 managed to embody everything right about the Thousand Year Blood War anime's production, and also everything wrong with it at the same time. It had some of the best visuals in the entire entire season, but it also
also came with the cost of the episode's animation. So much so that some rather good cuts made by animators like Eva Koi and Yugen were much more simplified in the TV broadcast. Now this had affected the quality of the fight between White and Ishin. I really hoped that in the Blu-ray they'd use the full cuts instead of the oversimplified versions, but unfortunately this wasn't the case. They had ended up using the oversimplified cuts in the Blu-ray version also. But that isn't to say that no proper corrections were made. There were definitely some solid ones here, just not as much as I'd hoped. One notable correction was the addition of Masaki's blood to the scene where she was bitten by White. Originally, the scene had looked a bit strange when White had bitten into Masaki's shoulder and there was no bleeding whatsoever. It almost felt as though White had bitten into a piece of rubber. So this was one solid fix that I can get behind. Now that aside, the other fixes were really minor. Like in this shot where the lighting of the background is muted so as to focus the attention of the scene a lot more on Ishin and Masaki. There's also these two minor adjustments that were made when Aizen slashes Ishin from behind. In one of the scenes they had altered how Ishin's blood spurt looked when he was slashed and the second was a change in animation for Ishin's fall following the attack. Now finally there were some minor adjustments to the lighting of certain shots which greatly improved the overall aesthetic that many fans had exclaimed was too dark during the broadcast. To be honest I don't think that some of these changes were of absolute necessity and while I'm grateful for these additions I'd have honestly preferred the effort being put into restoring the animator's original cuts. Considering the number of great corrections that they have done in the next two episodes I kind of understand why they didn't focus too much on episode 11. Episode 12 is probably one of my favorites when we consider all of the corrections that were made. We are well aware that blu-ray discs are made to appeal to hardcore fans of a franchise and one of the many ways the producers are able to add value to them is through corrections and reanimation of certain scenes. But in my opinion the most important value that blu-rays bring is the correction of certain continuity errors that might arise from the quick work required to meet deadlines for the TV broadcasts of episodes. And just like the major continuity error that was fixed in episode 7 with the iconic Save the Soul Society scene, we're given another major fix here. During the assembly of the captains in the Everything But The Rain flashback, Seijin Komomura was originally drawn with his current design without his helmet. This was a major mistake that was spotted within the TV broadcast and thankfully this was fixed within the Blu-ray release. Komomura is now given a timeline appropriate design with his helmet intact. Now this was one detail that had bothered me myself and quite a number of fans and seeing it fixed was a big relief. Now following in the spirit of some great upgrades, the rain in this episode gets a really nice buff. Normally I'd go over what the production was lacking and talk about how the Blu-rays had managed to fix it but in this situation I'm almost surprised that they had touched on it because one of the best parts of the first core of the Thousand Year Blood War arcs animation was just how great the rain had looked in particularly every scene and somehow they saw what they did and they had decided that they could still take it a step higher because they had decided to greatly enhance the already good rain effect in this episode making it superior to the already great TV broadcast version. Also for fans who were holding out hope for an uncensored version of the Masaki scenes I'm going to have to disappoint you. Nothing was changed about that cut and I'm honestly glad that it stayed that way because we don't really need unnecessary fan service. And even after all of these major changes that we have gotten they were still able to squeeze in the usual lighting readjustments, art corrections and additional shading. One of my favorite of these minor fixes was the extra detail that they had added to the clouds when Ishin, Ryuken and Urahara were having their interaction in the sky. The extra detailing in addition to the enhanced lighting on the edges of the clouds are really cool enhancements in my opinion. Moving on to the final episode of Core 1, episode 13. Now this episode features some really great corrections and some strong effect enhancements that make already great scenes look even better. Corrections that are present right from the start of the episode with two shots of Ichigo being redrawn from their honestly uglier TV iterations to significantly better versions in the Blu-rays. These corrections were made during Mira's appearance in Karakura to summon Ichigo back to Uetsu Nimaya's palace. This continues to a long chain of art fixes from redrawing another Ichigo face to multiple redraws for Hitsugaya's during his Zanjutsu training scene and some much needed fixes for Mashiro which definitely saved her looks from what they were in the TV version. We then go back to another set of Ichigo corrections when his blade is being hammered by Oetsu. But of all of the Ichigo corrections that were featured in this episode, my favorite is easily the fixes that were made to Ichigo's nose in the Zangatsu reveal scene. This was adapted from a panel that I really liked within the manga and the way that Kubo had depicted Ichigo's horrified face was one of my favorite panels. But the anime I don't think did it justice in the TV broadcast version because Ichigo's nose was drawn in a rather awkward manner which had shifted Ichigo's expression from horror to 
one more akin to anger. Now this was corrected to a much more manga accurate look within the Blu-rays and I really love that they've done this. And after a small lighting adjustment on a flashback to Yuhabak, we're sent back to Ichigo Corrections. The next few changes and enhancements are more effect focused, like Ichigo's reflection being made to look much lighter than in the TV version. They even add a extra reflection on these shards of glass to give it a more physically accurate look. After that we reach our final lap of changes during the final interaction between Ichigo and Onman Zangetsu. The first major upgrade is that the fragments of Onman Zangetsu's being that begin to fade away have increased quite a bit. They're also given much more detail so the scenes look even cooler than they did in the TV version. The scene where Ichigo receives his true powers has also been upgraded pretty nicely. The embodiment of Ichigo's true powers is recolored and given much stronger compositing in the Blu-rays, as it takes on this really rich saturated blue color that makes it stand out in comparison to the TV version. The scene where Ichigo's new power engulfs his body is also reanimated with much better looking effects that make the scene hit even harder. There are also these really nice streaks of a darker shade of blue that permeate through the blue light which make the scene look significantly more impressive. The eruption of Ichigo's spiritual pressure vaporizing the ocean is zoomed out a little more so we see the full scale of what has just happened. Nimaya is also repositioned in a much better way than he was in the manga during the scene where Ichigo claims his new Zanpakuto. The ocean is also recolored in one of the shots where it was originally grey in the TV version. Now this is pretty much every huge change that the Blu-rays had made and to be honest I'm really impressed with the end result. The discs not only have fixed major continuity errors but they have gone ahead and made multiple corrections to make sure that Bleach looks and feels the best that it ever has. The most impressive fact for me is that the most casual viewers probably won't notice a lot of the changes to the compositing and art direction but the fact that they had still felt the need to go back and make these corrections is proof of just how much the anime staff love Bleach and they're giving it their all to make it look absolutely amazing. It's extremely touching and rather reassuring that Studio Piero retaining their rights to adapt Bleach was definitely the best outcome. And of all things, the work that was done to the Blu-rays makes me confident of what we're going to be expecting from Core 2 of the anime. So yeah, Taguchi, you can drop that trailer anytime now. Now with all of the things said and done, we're left with one simple question. Should you buy the Bleach Blu-ray for the first Call of the Thousand Year Blood War arc? Well, this is a very easy question to answer. Yes, you definitely should go out and buy this Blu-ray. After all, we're Bleach fans and it would be great to support our beloved franchise however we can. Now, personally, I don't believe that loving a franchise so much should justify spending over $189 for the Blu-ray discs because that's quite a lot of money. So I'm going to give my honest thoughts on whether I think it's worth your money. One of the most consistent feelings I've had while making this video is absolute shock at just how much they have decided to add on to the Blu-rays. This is mainly because the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, while having its shortcomings, was still a production of unparalleled quality. A lot of the shots, especially from key episodes like 6 and 7, were almost perfect to begin with. No one would have faulted them for making the major changes like fixing Ichigo's damaged Yakusho and Komomura's missing helmet. Even if they didn't go back and make all of these changes, it would have still been a major win for Bleach fans due to the already high production value of the anime. But this wasn't enough as they had went out of their way to fix up an already great product and somehow they had made it better. Now this is made even more surprising by how director Toguchi wasn't even aware of these changes that were made by the anime staff because his team themselves had went out of their way to make all of these enhancements. And the Blu-rays managed to have even more value outside of the added content itself as we get extra information of multiple different aspects of the show from Kubo himself via comments that he has made for the release which helped to explain the story as well as character design sheets by the master character designer Masashi Kudo being also included in the Blu-ray release. It is clear that this was a project with a lot of passion behind it so in my opinion I believe that the Blu-rays are worth every cent of your money and it's a overall great way to support Bleach. It was quite a task to quickly put together this comparison while making it as extensive as possible. So if there were any changes made to the Blu-ray release that I haven't mentioned then definitely leave them in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Are you as impressed as I was with seeing all of the corrections that they made to the home video release? I look forward to reading all of your thoughts and lastly thank you for making it to the end of this video and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.